Hello, I'm Dr. Ellie Jamieson, and this is my assistant Lily. Can you say hello, Lily? Hello. <laughs> so today we're going to be finding out about poo. So we want to know what is poo and why is it important? So poo is the leftover bits of food that your body doesn't use, plus some smelly microbes as well. So we need to eat food to get energy and to get proteins to help build the different parts of our body and also to get vitamins and minerals to make sure that everything works properly like our brains and our eyes and moving our muscles. So we need to eat food and this goes into our digestive system and gets broken down and comes out the other end as poo. So first of all, when we eat something, what happens? You put it into your mouth and then you crunch up with your teeth. And also inside your mouth, as well as your teeth crunching up the food, you've got something in there called saliva. So this is like the water inside your mouth not only is it water, but it also contains some chemicals called enzymes, which help break down parts of that food. And then once you've crunched it all up and mixed it around with the saliva, then you swallow it down. So in our person here, you can see that we first of all crunch up our food in our mouth, and then we swallow it down our esophagus. So we're gonna crunch up some of these with our hands, and then we can put them into our mouth, can't we? Put them in, straight into the mouth though, when you crunch them up. So we're gonna crunch up some of our food and put it into our mouth here. And then with our food, usually, so we're using some shreddies here as our food. It could be any type of food and it just gets mashed up and put into the mouth. And then we also need some water to drink, don't we, to help wash it all down with. So have some water in our mouth, to squash things up for to. And then this travels down the esophagus, down here into the stomach. <laughs> Oh, you're dropping shreddies on me, it's okay. But mostly going into the mouth. Right, so we just swallow that bit down as well. And then, so coming down here into this esophagus, um, as well as just the water and the weight of it take it down, we also have um, the muscles of the esophagus. So this tube here has muscles along it, which kind of squish the food down into the stomach. Two more shreddies. Yeah, you can eat a bit. Because you're going to show us, we're not going to look at your food. We're just going to look at the food which comes out of this person here. So, the food goes down through the mouth, down the esophagus, and into the stomach. So, our person's having difficulty swallowing now today. So, it's this swallowing that helps to set off those muscles which go that lead up into the stomach. So, we're just going to help our person with the last little bit of a drink. Go on, you can eat it. Come on, swallow, swallow, swallow. So it's sort of moving down to the stomach now, isn't it? So, so in the stomach, this is like a big bag that's squished around. And at the stomach, instead of it shooting back out the mouth like it's being sick, what it has on your stomach is a little round muscle at the top and bottom of your stomach, which helps seal the stomach bag. And these are called sphincter muscles, and they keep this food inside your stomach so it won't shoot back out your mouth and sick again. Oh no, I've just been sick though. Right, so um, to stop that no. happening, we're just going to put some pegs on our person's mouth, aren't we? Yeah. I know, it's been sick all over our microbes, hasn't it? Right, so I'm also... Oh no. Our <laughs> <laughs> like giant mine. microbes have been covered in sick. That's okay, they don't mind it. They're... None of mine has been sick. Good, right, so we've got our feed into our stomach. It's being squished round in the stomach. So also in the stomach, Helping to break down that food, we've got acid. So we're going to put a bit of vinegar in there Ew. as the stomach acid. And also inside your stomach, you've got some enzymes as well. So some more chemicals in there, like you've got in your saliva, in your mouth, that help break down the food into its smaller parts as well. So we're going to add a bit of our stomach acid, our vinegar into our person to help break down its food. Okay, now we're going to see its mouth. Look! Look at how science is. Yeah. Science. Look at the science stuff. Yeah, so it's the food's being squished around in the stomach and when it stays in the stomach for between one to three hours. And then after that, the sphincter muscle at the bottom of the stomach will open up and the food can travel out of the stomach and down into the intestines. So in the intestines, we've got um you've got all the enzymes in the yes. You've got all the enzymes and things from the stomach, and then it, the food goes into the intestines, 
And that's where all these different bacteria are. So we've got some dry microbes here to show you what different shapes, they don't really have eyes. Not a virus. So we've got different microbes inside our intestines which help to break down the food and they can help to give us some essential vitamins in there as well. So they help to break down the food and in the intestine what happens is all the nutrients that you've got from breaking down your food are absorbed through the stomach walls. So absorbed means all these bits which are useful to your body move from inside the intestine and get into your blood through some teeny tiny holes. So you won't get any lumps going inside your body but anything which will dissolve in the water and be able to pass through the useful bits can go inside us. So that might be some of the sugars from our food and some of the small bits that you've broken it down to. And then the bits which get left in the middle of your intestines, so there'll be all the big hard to break down things. So this might be the cell walls from plants, so it's cellulose, and that makes up fibre. So it's, you always hear that it's important to eat lots of fibre and that helps the food to move through your body get out of your body faster so that you can get rid of all the nasty bits that you don't want inside there and so you don't get any bacteria growing too much inside your intestines. So I'm using through the intestines absorbing all the food and bits out there useful and all the lumpy bits come out the bottom don't they? Yeah so this again moves along here so we're being the muscles now squeezing it through the intestines so you've got more muscles inside the intestines and you've got another muscle at the bottom which means that your pee doesn't just come out any time but when you need to poo it collects there and the sphincter muscle holds the poo inside you until it's time to go to the toilet. So you're pushing it through and then out the other end you'll get the poo so Lily's just getting our poo out the bottom aren't you? Yeah. Right so our pee's moving through. So what poo? So all animals poo and there are a few exceptions to this. There's a few animals which don't poo at all. So these are things like mayflies, they don't do poo, so they don't have a digestive tract at all. So while they're the flies, they can't eat anything, which means that they don't need to poo out either. And then there's some other things like skin mites, mites which live on your skin, they can't poo out, so they don't have an anus, so they've got nowhere to let the poo out. So they keep all that waste inside them until they die. Um, and tardigrades as well. You might have heard about these, these are microscopic animals um, which they don't poo, but every time that they grow big enough to shed their skin and get a new skin, then they lose all their waste with their old skins. So humans don't really like poo. It's smelly, it comes out of our bottoms, and we like to put it down the toilet. So when we put our poo and our wheeze into the toilet, we can flush them away. There's only three things that you should put into any toilet. So you should only put pee or wee into toilets, poo and paper. So we're just going to do a quick demonstration now. Should we leave that person pooing over here? Okay. And we'll show you what happens when we put a... Oh, careful! <laughs> so don't be careful when you pick up bottles. Oh, right, that's your one. Because the lid's loose on this one and you'll throw it all over the kitchen. Right, now, the lid is loose on that one too. Right, so are you going to have the paper this time or are you going to have a baby wipe? Baby wipe. Right, okay, so Lily's going to have a baby wipe in her, so push that in there. So you shouldn't flush baby wipes down the toilet, but you can flush toilet paper down the toilet. So we we'll show you by putting it into these bottles. Put your lid on, nice and tight. Right, so I've got the toilet paper, the bit that you can flush down. Lily's got the baby wipe. Is your lid on nice and tight? Yeah, okay. Now you shake that really hard. And what's happening to yours? Mm -hmm. You can't see into mine. Mine's got all bubbly. That's all. Is yours bubbly? How's yours? Oh. How does yours I can't. Go bubbly? Mine's gone bubbly. I think I've just shaken it so hard. Oh no. Now I can see that inside mine, I can't see the paper anymore. It's all gone into tiny little bits broken down in the water. So that flushed down. I like yours. No, no, mine will flush down the toilet. Nice arrangement of the toilet paper. No, I mean, mine can't go as that. No. And what's happened to yours? What's happened to yours when you're shaking it? What's happened to the baby wipe? And it's still there. It's still there. So the baby wipe's made of plastic and it doesn't break down as easily as the toilet paper. So the toilet paper can be flushed Why down the toilet because it breaks down. 
Oh, you don't know my mum's got bobby. I think it's just this. I had something else in there beforehand. But it's broken oh, down. Oh. There's no lumps of it anymore. It's like me throwing down the toilet. But the baby wipe can't be. So the baby wipe's made of plastic. And what happens is there's lots of these baby wipes together that they stick together with any oils and fats that you're throwing down your sink from cooking. Wet. And they make something called a fat berg in the sewers. And this will bung up the sewers. And the only way of getting rid of it is to dig it out by hand. So these fat bergs can bung up the sewers and they can be tons. They, they can weigh several tons. They cost a lot of money to get rid of. So only flush down your toilet, poo, pee and paper. So what else do you know about poo? I'm going to give you a few facts about animal poo now. <laughs> is it going to break down anymore? Mine? No, it's not going anywhere, is it? So animal poo. So poos. Animals do different things to their poos and they can be quite funny about poos. So rabbits aren't like us. They but like poo. So they will eat the little tiny round poos they poo out and they can get more nutrients out of those and that helps them. Whales. Sperm whales yeah. use big clouds of their poo to defend themselves. Yeah. You know about that, don't you? Yeah. Um, do you know about any other funny animals with poos, Louie? Uh, what about spiders? Yeah. yeah, so orb web spiders, what do they decorate their webs to look like? Do you remember? Bird poos, yes, that's it. They decorate their webs to look like bird poos, so that things like wasps don't come along and kill them and eat them. And vultures, they can poo down their legs to help cool themselves down. Caterpillars. Do you know what caterpillars do with their poo, um, Lily? They shoot um, the poos up. Yeah, they can shoot the poos out of their bottom really, really fast, can't they? They launch the poo out of their bottom and they can squirt it up to 40 times their own body length. And this gets the poo away from them so that things like ants won't come along and eat the caterpillars. Um, and also sand, really fine tropical sand on beaches, so coral sand, the beautiful um, fine white stuff. What's that, Lily? That's actually poo. Yeah, that's actually parrotfish poo, isn't it? So parrotfish eat the corals and they poo out that really lovely fine sand. So all that beautiful sand is parrotfish poo. And then dung beetles. Now dung beetles really, really love animals poo, don't they? So they take they take a poo from other animals they and they can make it into a ball. Yeah, they eat it and to take it away. So they might take it down their own homes. So they don't want to eat it where it is. They'll push it to their own homes where they'll eat it. And they can push over a thousand times their own body weight in poo as well. So animals are a bit funny with poo, but we can also use poo as well. So we can use poo to make people better. So there's a disease called C. difficile. So this little funny shaped bacteria here, so it doesn't really have eyes, but it's this kind of shape. And C. difficile, you can get this if you've taken antibiotics for a very long time and you've Don't got rid of vomit. all the other bacteria inside Don't your body. Vomit. And this can Don't grow vomit. and grow and grow and grow Don't and take over, <laughs> take over your whole gut and that's not good for you. So that can give you diarrhea. But to get rid of the C. difficile, you can do two things. You can either take more antibiotics to get rid of this bacteria, but that doesn't always work. Or you can take poo from someone who's healthy and put it into somebody who's got this bacteria. And if you take poo from somebody who's healthy and put it into the person with this bacteria, then they usually get better in one to two days. With antibiotics, that doesn't always work and that usually takes weeks and maybe months to get rid of C. diff. So we can use poo in medicine to help get rid of this nasty bacteria. So I've been told that I'm not allowed to throw it away though. So I won't throw it over there. But poo can help us to help people make people better. Okay, so if you want to find out more about poo, you can make your own stomach at home. So all you need is a plastic bag and a Ziploc bag's good for that. So you can squish up some food like some cereal or some jam sandwich or something, cut it up to be like the action of your teeth, then mix some vinegar in with it and squish it around. And squish it, squish it. And then after that, you can you can put it into some tights and you can push that stomach contents down and the tights, because they've got lots of tiny holes in them, all the things that your body needs will come out through the sides of the tights and in the middle of the tights, you'll just get that big squishy bit of food like the sandwich and that's the bit which comes out the bottom and you can make that throughout the bottom of your tights. So have fun with poo and see you next week.